Hey Team Beal, welcome to another edition of Commander's Corner where we sit down with your Wing Commander, Colonel Larry Broadwell. And this time we actually have members from the 9th Medical Group to ask some questions. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. I would like to know what has been one of your biggest challenges since arriving here at Beal, and if you haven't overcame that challenge yet, how can we better assist you in doing so? You bet. First off, I want to tell you, you guys are absolutely crushing it. Um, I, I am extremely proud to serve by your side. One of the things I continue to struggle with is communication. And, you know, I've, I've seen it at all levels. I saw, I've seen it at the flight level. Uh, I've seen it as a, as a squadron commander and as a group commander. And now as a wing commander. And, and, it's, and it's even more difficult for me to communicate as a wing commander. Uh, and, and what I'm starting to realize, it, it, it's a team sport. Communicating is a team sport. Everybody has to be involved at all levels. And it's not just talking, it's listening. Uh, and, and we're, we're okay at it, but we need to get a lot better at it. And so that's one thing you can help me with. And so communicating with your supervisors, and if you are a supervisor, communicating with those that work in your workspaces, um, letting your leadership know what you need, uh, letting your leadership know all the successes that you're having, all the challenges that you're having, and then asking them really tough questions. Hi, sir. Hello. I just had this question for you because I wanted to know uh, your insight and sure. uh, your wisdom on this question. You give me too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> As the Air Force continues to do more with less mm -hmm. and ops tempo steadily increases, the mm -hmm. new blended retirement system and EPR system may present less of an incentive for future airmen to make the Air Force a career. How do you think these changes will affect the longevity and sustainment of the Air Force with the potential loss of experienced leaders and mentors? Yeah, so let's, um, let's, think, let's think through them separately, okay? The blended retirement system I see as an opportunity uh, for airmen who are conscientious about their savings to potentially leave uh, after a 20-year career with a, at least as equal to or potentially better financial entitlement. But what we really gain is the, is the interim years where somebody would normally leave after a one-year enlistment um, and, and potentially leave with no entitlement, uh, no retirement. Now they have the ability to leave with some retirement entitlement. I should, probably shouldn't call it retirement, but some financial entitlement. Does, does that make sense? Yes, sir. So you'll be able to leave with that much sooner. So what will that do for us? Potentially someone who is only going to serve one enlistment may serve two, may serve three, and then make a decision then to leave. And if they don't make it to 20 years because they elect because of their family or whatever reasons that it's just not right for them, they were willing to serve for a couple more enlistments. And I think that's a win for the Air Force. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Now, the enlisted promotion system. This continues to get, there's a lot of anxiety with the change before, but the, the biggest benefit I see to the, uh, the new enlisted promotion system, uh, it's a system that allows us to promote, identify and promote those that are most deserving, uh, that are most prepared to, to serve in the next higher rank to do so sooner rather than later. We, we come to the Air Force to train to do our jobs. We wanna be given the resources and the time to do our job, and if we do them well, we want to be rewarded. And that's what I think the new enlisted retirement system, or I'm sorry, <laughs> promotion system does. I blended them together. Yes, Make sir. sense? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. So my question for you is, free education has been a common reason for airmen to join the Air Force, but now that the DOD is providing services related to transgender reassignment, do you see that becoming another benefit to bring in more potential airmen? Mm. I don't know that that same uh, that there'll be the same draw for transgender uh, citizens to become airmen. And so the idea that large numbers of, uh, of citizens who have gender dysphoria will enter the service and then um, receive treatment, I think, is, I think is unlikely. Now, well, so let's talk a little bit about those that are in the service. We benefit greatly from having a diverse uh, group of airmen. Group of airmen being officer, enlisted, civilian, and I even at the last time I did an interview, children airmen. I mean, we're all part of the same team. So different experiences and backgrounds um, are all very, very important to us. So I value all airmen and what all airmen can bring to the fight. So that's my thought. Since the 100th Uniform Board session mm -hmm. commenced recently, mm -hmm. I was just curious as to what changes you would like to see mm -hmm. changed 
um, whether it be flight suit or ABUs. Mm -hmm. What changes would you like to see? Well, I just recently had a child and they're changing the maternity uniform, which yeah. I'm super ecstatic about. Super? Because the last one was beyond uncomfortable. Yeah. So the changes for that one, I'm over the moon for. Okay. Yes. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I, um, I don't pay a lot of attention to uniform boards right. or to uniforms. <laughs> I'm really focused on providing the development and the training for the airmen who we put in the uniforms. Mm -hmm. I think if we get that right, the uniforms won't be, aren't as big of a deal. So as long as it's, uh, it's practical, uh, as long as it uh, meets the, real, the basic purpose of a uniform, that, it's, um, that it is indeed uniform, that it helps us identify as a particular service in this case, and that it, it fulfills the practical purpose that we need it to fulfill, uh, then I'm okay with it. Fair? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that does it for this edition of Commander's Corner. If you have any questions, please send it to either our Facebook, our Twitter, or our email directly. And uh, join us next time for Commander's Corner. <laughs>